Welcome back. Starting this step, let's start exploring API Gateway. Why do we need API Gateway? Typically, in almost all architectures that you see with Lambda function, right before the Lambda function would be an API Gateway. So why should your request go through an API Gateway? Let's get an understanding of it right now. Most applications today are built around REST API, right? So you have, you have get, post, put, and delete requests. You make an API call and get your things done. However, management of REST APIs is not easy. You have to take care of authentication and authorization. You don't want to allow everybody to call the REST API. You want to make sure that you limit the number of calls for your API consumers. You'd want to set quotas. You'd want to do rate limiting and things like that for your API cache, for your API consumers. You also want to make sure that you can have multiple versions of your API. APIs evolve and as time goes on, you might have multiple versions which need to be active at the same time. You also want to be able to monitor your API calls. And to improve the performance, you would also want to cache your API requests. So where should I implement all these features? How about a fully managed service with auto scaling that can act as a friend door to your APIs? That's what Amazon API Gateway is all about. For example, you have a Lambda function where your core logic behind your REST API is. And you can use your API Gateway to add all the features that are typically needed by your REST APIs. API Gateway is all about publishing, maintaining, monitoring, and securing APIs at any scale. It integrates with AWS Lambda. You can also integrate with Amazon EC2. You can also integrate with Amazon EC2, ECS, or any web application. API Gateway supports HTTPS and also WebSockets. Some applications like chat apps and streaming dashboards needs two-way communication, and that's what WebSockets allow you to do. API Gateway supports HTTPS and WebSockets too. And in addition, API Gateway is serverless. So you pay for use. You pay for the number of API calls which are coming in and how much time you are taking to execute those API calls. So you pay for API calls and the connection duration. In the next step, let's get our hands dirty and look at the API Gateway in action. I'll see you in the next step. Welcome back. In this step, let's get ha our hands dirty with Amazon API Gateway. I've already launched up Amazon API Gateway. You should know how to do that. Go to services, type in API Gateway, and you would land up in here. And what does it help you to do? It helps you to create, maintain, and secure APIs at any scale. As we talked earlier, the backend systems can be EC2, Lambda, or any web service. The first choice that you need to make is an API type. I'll leave the HTTP API for a little while. You'd use WebSocket API if you're going for WebSockets. You'd use REST API if you'd want complete API management features. And you'd use REST API private if you'd want your REST API to be accessible only within a private network. Now, what is the difference between HTTP API and REST API? REST API reads develop a REST API where you gain complete control over the request and response. And HTTP API reads build low latency and cost effective REST APIs with a few built-in supports. Because both of these options, HTTP API and REST API, can be used to build your REST APIs. So what is the difference? The difference is that HTTP API is actually a new version of the REST API. So it's actually a simpler and more cost-effective option for REST API. But the HTTP API does not provide all the features that a REST API provides as of today. I would expect the HTTP API to develop over a period of time. For now, let's start with using the REST API. So let's build our API gateway using the REST API. So I'll go ahead and say build. And I'll say OK in here. By default, it would bring up an example API of a pet store. Let's not worry about it for now. Let's choose to create a new API. So I would want to create a new REST API. And I'll call this my hello world. I'll say API gateway. You can add a description if you'd want to. There are three options when it comes to endpoints, regional, edge optimized, and private. 
private is when you'd want to have a private network. You need to go for edge optimized if you'd want to allow invocations from something called edge locations. We already talked about regions and availability zones. AWS has regions around the world. However, there are a lot of places where regions are not available and even there you'd want to serve users quickly. What AWS does is it offers something called edge locations around the world. And there is an AWS service called CloudFront, which will help you to distribute content to all the edge locations around the world so that you can, so that you can decrease the latency for your users. So there are 20 regions, but there are about 200 plus edge locations. We'll talk about CloudFront and edge locations in detail when we get there. For now, let's just choose regional, which means the endpoints would be offered from our specific region. And let's create an API. Now, once you come in here, you can see a lot of details, right? So you can see the whatever APIs you'd want to manage through your API gateway and what are the different methods that you'd want to have for each of these API. Do you want to have get method, put method, delete method, or which post methods you'd want to support? You can have multiple stages, like a dev environment, a QA environment, a stage environment. So all that kind of stuff. You can have authorizers. So API Gateway can perform authorization as well. So you can create authorizers in here. You can customize the gateway responses in the gateway responses. So if there is a 404, how should you respond? You can create the request response models. So what should be the structure of your request response in models? You can configure the permissions and all that stuff that you would want to give to your API gateway in resource policy. You can generate the documentation for your API and look at it in documentation. And, and there are a few settings that you can do in the settings. Let's not worry about all that right now. Let's get our hands dirty and let's create a new API. So I'll say create method. So I'll say create method and I would want to create a get method. So I would want to support a get method from this API and I'll say, okay. And this would generate the setup for us. And now we can configure what is the backend for that get method. What I would want to do is I would want to invoke a Lambda function. We have already created a Lambda function earlier. So let's use that. You can see that there are other things you can do in here, like make a HTTP call or mock or a few other options. Let's not worry about them right now. Uh, over here, let's select which Lambda function. We already created a Lambda function in the last steps. So I'll use that. My Node.js Lambda is the function I would make use of. You can see that we are using the default timeout. The default timeout is 29 seconds. So that's the default timeout. If you'd want to configure a custom timeout, you can go ahead and configure that in here. On an API gateway, you can configure a very, very high timeout. But let's use the default timeout. That's fine for us. And let's go ahead and say save. The notification which comes up says, we are giving permission to execute the Lambda function to API gateway, and that's cool. So let's go ahead and say, okay. And within a little while, you'd be able to see the entire thing come up. Now we have an uh, entire flow configured in here. Now in the screen, which comes up, you can go ahead and test your Lambda function. Let's go ahead and say, test it. I'll go ahead and say, test. You can see that the response which the Lambda returned is returned back to us as is. So the Lambda returns my first Lambda function from dev. And that's exactly what is being returned back. And you can also see the logs in here. So you can see all the stuff behind the request in here. In this step, we quickly created an API gateway to front your Lambda function. So your API gateway would now allow external users to come in and access your Lambda function. The next step, let's look at a few more details about your API gateway. I'll see you in the next step. Welcome back. In the previous step, we created a simple get method for the REST API. Let's now explore some of the important API gateway features. One of the important gateway features is something called authorizers. Before a REST API call is made, you want to make sure that it's coming from an authorized user. How can you do that? That's where you can create a new authorizer. You can define the logic of how you'd want to authorize. You can either define a Lambda function, which helps you in validating the user request, or there is another service which is provided by AWS, which is called AWS Cognito. So in AWS Cognito, you can manage your users and you can integrate the API gateway with Cognito to authorize your users. We'll discuss about Cognito a little later in this course. The other important thing is the API keys, which is present in here. 
you might have a number of clients for your API. How do you identify them? That's where you can assign each one of them a API key. So you can go ahead and create an API key and you can generate a key and you can use that key to track your API clients. So whenever they submit a request, they should use this specific API key. This is more just to identify a client rather than authentication or authorization. And the API keys are useful in configuring something called usage plans. So in the usage plans, you can create you can create limits on what you can do on each API key. So you can enable throttling. Throttling is basically how many requests per second can they send over an extended period of time. Let's say I configure 100 requests per second. So that's the maximum number of requests that they would be able to send. Let's say over a five minutes period, they would be able to send five into 60 into 100 requests. Now, the burst is to support a sudden burst of requests. Sometimes a sudden burst of requests might happen, but sometimes it might also indicate a denial of service attack. All of a sudden you get 10,000 requests. You don't want that to happen. So you configure burst limit, let's say 800 or 1000, something of that kind. The next is quota. Quota is what is the total number of requests allowed in a specific month. So usage plans help you in enforcing throttling and quota limits. The other option which is present in here is called client certificates. You might be making calls from API gateways to your backend services. It might be Lambda or a wide variety of other things. How can they be sure that the requests are originating from API Gateway? To help them identify that the request is really coming from API Gateway, you can generate a client certificate for the API Gateway. So you can generate a client certificate and the caller can check if the identity is right, if the request is really coming from the API Gateway. Now, let's go back to our resource which we were working on. So let's go back to the get and what I'll do is I would want to deploy this API. So we would want to deploy this API and make use of it from outside. So let's do that, deploy. I would want to create a new stage and I'll call this dev. And I'll say deploy. So we are deploying our test API to deployment, to dev environment. And we now have a dev API. Let's go ahead and invoke the URL from outside. And you can see that now I'm able to call this from outside as well. Similar to this, you can actually create multiple stages and deploy your API to multiple environments. Once you deploy your API, there are a number of features that are automatically enabled. You can cache your API. So basically you can say, I would want to cache up to specific amount of time. TTL is time to leave. You can say, I would want to cache how much of requests up to how much period of time. You can also configure stage level details for throttling. You can integrate with web application firewall. Web application firewall is very, very good in protecting your web applications from security attacks like SQL injection and things like that. You can also configure the client certificate in here, which the API gateway will be using to call the backends. You can also look at the logs. You can enable CloudWatch logs. You can enable X-ray tracing. Now, there are a lot of features which are in here. The last feature which is important is something called a canary deployment. Let's say you're deploying a new version of API. You don't want to completely switch from one version to another version right away. What you can do is you can send a percentage of the requests to the new version of the API. And that is what is called a canary. So you can create a canary deployment in here and saying how many requests do you want to send to the canary deployment. So I would want 10%, 15% and all that fun stuff. Let's not worry about it. Let's go ahead and delete Canary. In this step, we looked at a wide variety of features which are offered by API Gateway. I'll see you in the next step with some of the things that you would need to remember from the certification perspective. I'll see you in the next step. Welcome back. In this step, let's review some of the things that we have learned about the API Gateway. API Gateway provides API lifecycle management for RESTful APIs and WebSocket APIs. You can run multiple versions of the same API using an API Gateway. Some of the important features of API Gateway are rate limiting, throttling, and also fine-grained access permissions using API keys 
for third party developers. You can integrate API Gateway for authorization with, with IAM. So if you have internal AWS users who are going to make use of the API, then you can authorize the REST API calls using IAM. You can also integrate authorization with Amazon Cognito, or you can write a custom Lambda function, also called Lambda authorizer, to authorize your API requests. I'm sure you're having an interesting time, and I'll see you in the next step.